recording to be started yeah so good afternoon all uh, in this particular lab session we will be discussing supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning okay and based on that the your task will be to prepare a study material for supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so that should be a type of material one by one you need to prepare the note for example if you start with the supervised learning then initially you need to explain what is supervised learning its definition which are the things included in then after that you need to explain different different examples two three examples i am expecting and explain the examples in a such a way that the other students will come to know through that example what is the exact meaning of supervised learning and similarly you can prepare material on unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so that will be your assignment number 1 and it is common for all the students more details will be provided on your google classroom so uh, tonight it will be made available on your google classroom so just read it and then you can start working on the assignment number 1 okay so before this assignment to be assigned to you we will be discussing in this particular session the concept of supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning and semi supervised learning as well okay so we will start with approaches or to machine learning so we already seen the definition of machine learning where we discussed that we are trying to develop the machines or computer program such that it will learn from the data and based on that learning it will take its decision and generally when we talk about machine learning we need a sufficient amount of data so that the model machine learning model will be trained for huge amount of data so that whatever prediction it will make that will be accurate one again when we talk about machine learning two things are very important first one is algorithms so there are some well known algorithms available in the literature those algorithms can be used directly to uh, develop the machine learning model or there are some well known statistical models for example regression right or probability distributions so these are the models are also available so we can make use of these algorithms and models and once our machine learn learning algorithm will be ready then the task will be perform without any explicit instruction or without doing a lot of coding and generally when we say machine learning certain steps are involved in it first step is generally collection of the data for which you are planning to develop a model then once we collect the data the data filtering is very important for example suppose you give a examination of numerical and statistical methods and the examination in of 100 marks so we conduct examination and grades are given to you marks are given to you so you will be getting the marks between 0 and 100 and all the students will get some marks right and when the marks are entered into your mark sheet if unfortunately or by mistakenly suppose a student got 104 marks so practically this number is impossible this is a human error because mark should be between 0 and 100 so whatever 104 marks is entered that is anomaly or outsider and data filtering process we is generally carried out in order to make sure that <coughs> the data is within the range also the data is entered or collected correctly again once the data is properly collected 
filter then analysis is very important so based on your scores different groups will be made so the students who received marks less than 40 second group the second class students then students in first class and students in distinction so based on your performance examination this type of analysis is carried out how many students are uh, have received bars less than 40 how many students are in first class second class and distinction again this type of analysis one approach another is suppose student photo and its corresponding marks are there so it is for all the students and suppose there are 100 students in the class so what can be done out of this 100 40 students are taken for the training purposes so that student photo when that photo will be captured by the system it can tell how many marks that student received so this is how we can train the algorithm and once that algorithm will be ready then we can ask the algorithm that tell me who are who have received marks less than 40 then the algorithm should display the photos of the student who received marks less than 40 so this is how we can train the model again as i mentioned out of 100 students how many students we train let's say 80 students then we can test the algorithm so for remaining student we can repeat the similar kind of process to verify whether the trained algorithm is properly working or not and once the model is trained then again we will test for we will ask the algorithm that how many student or who are uh, in second class so it will display some photographs right so that we will come to know who are in second class similarly how many students and who are in first class again in distinction so this is one approach to collect filter analyze the data and based on that we can develop a machine learning algorithm and once that full fruit model will be there <coughs> we can use it for future predictions so this is how we can understand the philosophy of machine learning and these are the various steps involved in it again the common examples there are so many examples so alexa siri these are the personal assistants okay again face recognition image recognition product recommendation that example we have seen so all these examples are based on machine learning algorithms okay so these are the basic things about machine learning then when we talk about machine learning algorithm then we need to talk about data as well and when we say data then basically we talk about labeled data and unlabeled data but before that we will just review what is data so any information is called as data for example your name so student and its corresponding name is a data if you take images of the student then the image is also considered as a data your roll number is also data your uh, full name is also data your score in numerical and statistical method is also a data so any information is there that can be generally called as a data and that data needs to be classified into labeled and unlabeled data that we will try to understand so what is labeled data so data that comes with tag like name type or number it is called as a label data for example a photograph of student is there and below that name it's his name is written his or her name is written then it is called as a labeled data for example first photo is sachin so sachin is the name of the data and then the sachin is a name is nothing but the tag or its name right 
suppose a student received 80 marks in numerical and statistical methods then what we say that the tag will be the 80 right so that is its score so it can be linked with the performance then unlabeled data means the data comes with no tag or no label okay for example a photograph is there and below that there is no name then data is there but it is not labeled a name is not given to it or the identification mark is not given so such data is called as unlabeled data and we need to develop machine learning models for both labeled data as well as unlabeled data again suppose if we have either labeled data or unlabeled data how to develop a machine learning algorithm so first step is we need to train the data and suppose you have a 100 data set so this is the total data set and out of this 100 data set what we will do we will take some of the data for training purposes and this particular data that out of 100 if you are taking 80 data for training then it is called as training data set and for that at 80 data set the ai model or machine learning algorithm is trained and some predictions can be made okay so what could be the example so for example if you are trying to build a model for self driving car then what information it should know that road signals so that road signal data should be the uh, uh, needs to be processed by that self driving car he has that vehicle has to overtake some other vehicle so the image data of other data that could be a data then again the vehicle is moving and somebody is coming behind and he is pressing some horn then that audio data is also there again visual data can also be there so all these data must be there and the machine learning model which is used for self-driving car it should be trained for all those data sets okay now in simple words what we can say when we say label data then each and every objects are assigned with certain names or numbers or some kind of indicators so it is called as a labeled data for example if this picture appear then it is considered as dog if the second picture appear on your screen then it is called as a cat and when we say unlabeled data means a image will be there but its name will not be given okay so this is basically the difference between the labeled data and unlabeled data and that data could be a number it can be a uh, image it can be a video it can be an audio anything okay and it can also be classified into labeled as well as unlabeled each type of data and the purpose of discussing these things because henceforth when we talk about machine learning algorithm so many times we will be using the word labeled data unlabeled data and at that time you should not ask a question what is labeled data and unlabeled data okay so as in this particular session we will be discussing about approaches to machine learning so as we already discussed that machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and again machine learning can be classified into supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning and semi supervised learning and from word itself we can understand that the semi supervised learning is a combination of supervised and unsupervised learning and there are certain symbols given 
for each and every type of machine learning and from those symbols you can basically understand what it could be what would be its meaning okay so we will start one by one so first one is supervised learning so in case of supervised learning the labeled data is available with you and for every input there will be a output and we train the model using the algorithm that maps the input and their corresponding output for example input will be image of either male or female and the model is trained in such a way that it will identify the given images of male or female so basically in case of supervised learning we are using the labeled data and for that labeled data we develop the algorithm however in case of unsupervised learning there is no labeled data data would be there but it will not be labeled and you need to develop algorithm or machine learning uh, algorithm such that based on the pattern of that data unlabeled data based on its patterns or similarities the model will predict what is the product so this is the unsupervised learning then in case of reinforcement learning the machines uses previous data or historical data to evolve itself learn new things and make a decisions accordingly and in this case there is no need of training because based on the past experience the reinforcement machine learning model evolves itself then in case of semi supervised learning some supervised or some labeled data would be there and some not unlabeled data would be there so this particular model will use both data labeled as well as unlabeled data and the ultimate goal of semi supervised learning is to minimize the cost of developing the model because the cost of labeled data is high and if we have some sort of labeled data then we can easily make a better prediction for unlabeled data so briefly when we say supervised learning then labeled data would be there when we say unsupervised learning then labeled data will not be there when we say reinforcement learning then the model or the system will learn from the past experience and it will evolve itself and when we say semi supervised learning then both labeled as well as unlabeled data would be there now we will see each and every type of machine learning algorithm in detail so we already seen the definition of supervised learning labeled data would be there means known input and known output will be there and for that data we develop the algorithm and the ultimate goal is to map the input and their corresponding output and that model should be trained in such a way that whenever a unknown thing is provided the prediction should be correct or the error in the prediction should be as minimum as possible again in order to train the supervised machine learning algorithms we can use either classification problem or we can use regression problem so for example in case of regression we know that y is equal to a plus bx is one of the regression problem where data associated with x is with you and corresponding y will be with you and by using regression method you find out the value of a and b and once a and b will be with you equation y is equal to a plus bx will be your regression model and that model can be used to find out 
any value of y for given value of x again in case of classification problem suppose you took a hundred images of male and train the algorithm again after you took hundreds of images of female and train the model so your model will be ready then next time you will give an unknown image and your model will tell either it is a male or it is a female or it is something else so this is how we can develop the supervised learning model so basically two types are there classification problem where we saw the example of male and female and in regression problem where we saw the equation of a straight line y is equal to a plus bx now we will take an example we know that there are different types of graphs it could be green or yellow or black or different shades would be there right and we know that if a green graph will be there we will label it as a green graph if it is a yellow we will call it as a yellow and so on so for each type label is also there and we will train the model for all types of graphs and once that model will be there then you will give input as unknown graph and the model will try to find out whether it is a green whether it is a yellow or whether it is a black so this is how the supervised learning would takes place because input is there its corresponding output is also there input is graph output is its color so input output is also there and how we are developing our model based on its color what would be its name and once the model will be there we will try to predict for unknown graph right and when the problem is related to classification then we can use one of the method support vector machine discipline analysis navy base nearest neighbor or neural network so these are the some of the methods used for supervised learning especially when the problems are related to classification and in upcoming units we will be discussing each and every method in detail if the problem is related to regression then linear regression ensemble method decision tree neural network so these are some of the other methods and in upcoming units we will be discussing those methods so the purpose of putting all these methods here so that you will come to know which are the method used for solving classification problems and the methods which are used for regression problems yes any question is there related to supervised learning okay yeah if you have any question in between you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question because i am in the presentation mode and i couldn't see the chat box okay now we will see how this learning process takes place we already discussed this example but if we divide the whole problem into simple simple steps then we can understand in more detail about the concept of supervised learning so first of all we need to establish the category of training data set okay so we may have a 100 samples of yellowish graph 100 samples of black color graphs so these are the category we decided then we need to give labels that below yellow color graphs yellowish below black color we will give label that is black color graphs this is second step then whatever 100 yellow color graphs are there and whatever 100 black color graphs are we need to divide the all samples into three data sets one two and three so the first data set will be used for training purpose 
so based on the data set one we will train the machine learning algorithm once that algorithm will be ready then we will use second data set to test the data set so that we will check whether our machine learning algorithm is working or not and third part will can be used for validation purpose right so this is how we are going to divide the samples into three first some sample for training purpose some sample for testing purpose and remaining for validation purpose again a question may come what should be its proportion we will discuss in upcoming slides okay then how we will train the model so it would be based on features so whatever training data set we have taken so first of all what we will do out of this training data set some samples should be related to yellow color grapes so this is first input feature second feature could be the black color grapes right so first of all we will train for yellowish color then black color then we will combine and properly we will connect the input feature with output feature yes it has to train first then test then validate mm -hmm. can you repeat your question once again sir we uh, means i think is uh, a whole data set should go in three steps one by one uh, mm -hmm. we how we are se separating the data set in three right so your basic question is in this case suppose we have 200 data points so on which basis we are deciding which uh, sample will be in train data set which will be in test and which will be in validation right so there are certain rules okay so that we will be discussing in our upcoming units that among these 200 samples how many samples should be taken for training purpose and how many should be kept for training and validation purpose because the selection could be on random basis there could be a systematic selection and there are so many patterns for example if we know that 100 yellow color grapes are there and 100 black color grapes are there then we can think that out of 100 i will be taking 80 yellow colored grapes for training purpose and remaining 24 testing and validation you can think about it similarly in second set also we can think that 80 can be taken for training and remaining can be put for the testing purpose right sir uh, why we don't take the whole 200 into first training then whole 200 into testing and then whole 200 into validation exactly your question is absolutely correct so let's take practical example okay suppose a solar panel is there okay and the failure of the solar panel could be due to a development of a crack in it suppose a lot of dust is there on the solar panel again it will reduce the performance so that could be another reason again in some of the solar panel hot spots would be there right so these are the reasons causing the uh, causing reduction in the performance of the solar panel so initially what we can do we can took random pictures let's say 100 pictures okay and based on those 100 pictures we will be developing our machine learning algorithm now the thing is that we can develop our model for all 100 images that is possible then the question arises how to test whether your model is working properly or not because you cannot take one of the random image to test it right if we take it then machine already that algorithm already knows because that data set is already there in the trained algorithm so we can take the existing one out of this hundred but uske se kya issue ho jayega ki 
वो इमेज ऑलरेडी उसमें है तो यू कैन इजिली डिटेक्ट सो द जनरल प्रैक्टिस इज आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड वी विल ट्रेन ओनली फॉर एटी एंड रिमेनिंग ट्वेंटी कैन बी यूज फॉर ट्रेनिंग टेस्टिंग पर्पज and in that testing we were again checking whether whatever fault the model is detecting it is correct or not again all these 100 images are there our model is already ready then again next time what we will do we will give an unknown image which will not be from this 100 images that would be any random image and if your model is correctly predicting the fault in that unknown image or unknown solar panel then we can say that your model is validated it is correctly predicting for some unknown so that's why we are dividing the data into trained data set test data set and validation data set so and the reason is also very genuine see every time you cannot go and visit the solar power plant take the put up the panel and train your model because all this machine learning model takes takes place in laboratory only so if you have a hundred of data set in laboratory itself you do so many trials and errors and do a lot of work in order to test the model and once you satisfied with your machine learning model then you can say now i can go to the field i can take any unknown image of the solar power plant and i will validate the real behavior of my machine learning model so am i answer to your question yes sir yeah this is very important question okay then we already discussed that yes yes, yes. yes. any question any okay now we will go ahead now so in order to develop that machine algorithm so we understood that we get some trained data set then testing data and validation but how to train that machine learning algorithm so if if we want to classify male and female then we can go for the algorithms which are related to classification if we want to find out the relationship between two variable let's say x and y then we will go for a plus bx in that case regression so similarly based on the type of data we will use either support vector machine or decision tree that we will discuss in upcoming slide then once it is implemented the algorithm for and we train the data set then what we will do we will find out the effectiveness of the data or the model for some test data set with some controlled and uncontrolled parameter because here what we did out of this 100 sample 80 we are using for training purpose and we are keeping 20 as a testing purpose so we are just controlling the parameters or controlling the things again we are not we are not trying to identify all types of grape for example the size of the grape also varies right so we are not focusing on different size of grapes we are just focusing on whether it is yellow or black or something else so this is how you can decide how many parameters you are interested or you want to study then as i mentioned once your model will be ready you need to test it for its accuracy so the accuracy of the model could be 90% it could be 95% or it could be anything if the correct output is predicted by the model then it can be concluded that our model is accurate then we will go for the validation by providing some unknown input so any question related to supervised learning especially related to test uh, steps okay so there are certain advantages and disadvantages of supervised learning so first one is supervised learning is helpful in deriving the output 
from past experience or prior knowledge right means every input is mapped with corresponding output so that is known to you right second it supports performance optimization by incorporating past experience suppose you have a data set of 100 graphs and for that you train your model right and the accuracy is let's say 90 percent and you are not happy with 90 percent then next time what you can do you can train the machine learning model for 1000 sample in order to increase its accuracy and next time you may get more than 90 percent accuracy right so that is possible so that flexibility you will have then supervised machine learning tends to solve several kinds of practical computation problems again there are certain disadvantages as well the only disadvantage of supervised learning model is that it cannot handle complicated tasks suppose only different grips are there and if they are not labeled the model don't know which one is green which one is yellow or black color is there so they don't know he don't know right so in that case it is challenging again if there are so many variety of fruits is there then again in that case the model may face a problem in case if the test data set varies from the training data set the supervised learning algorithm will face problem while predicting the outcome just the question raised by the student yeah that was very important question suppose you train all 100 images right to develop your machine learning algorithm and for testing you give some unknown image and if there is a huge deviation between the trained images and this is unknown one then you will not be in a good position to predict the accuracy of the model and this is one of the reason theoretically in order to predict we generally take 80 percent of the sample for developing algorithm and remaining 20 for testing purpose again training requires a lot of computation see let's take an image of a solar panel so many components are there on a panel right and again different kinds of faults may come for example crack crack could be very small to very large that could be of any size any shape any orientation would be there so the training always require a lot of time and again whatever sample you are taking the sample should it cover all types of possible outcomes for example the smallest crack to the largest crack so that it will be trained properly otherwise what may happen that suppose the model is trained for very small and moderate crack and suppose in a particular orientation of the crack so this is a particular orientation and next time the crack is very long and orientation is something different so in that case the outcome may not be predicted properly or the crack will not be detected in an effective way so these are the some of the issues so you need to focus a lot on collecting proper data and train the model appropriately so that all possible outcomes could be mapped then it does require an ample amount of knowledge regarding the object class yeah of course as i said suppose you are to test the solar panel for its dust so the dust may get concentrated at one corner only the dust may spread over the surface entire surface so there are so many uh, situations or we can say pattern of the dust collection on the solar panel so if you have knowledge of all kind of such possible things then you can train the model in a better way 
otherwise what will happen you will train the model for the dust which is concentrated only at the corners or at some of the places right and if next unknown panel in which the uniformly distributed dust will be there then the model may not be in a position to predict that if there is a dust or not if it is there what will be its concentration so that issue may arise so knowledge prior knowledge is also very essential okay any question related to supervised learning okay we will go ahead then now next part is unsupervised learning so we already discussed that in case of unsupervised learning there is no label data so only different different grapes will be there and they will not be labeled for yellowish or black color graphs so labeling will not be there and in this case the machine only knows the input data only graphs and the algorithm or that system has to process the data find out the hidden patterns or similarity within the inputs so the first pattern could be the color yellow color grape and black color grape so based on color it can classify that there are two types of grapes so the pattern is color again similarity could be the criteria suppose along with the two grapes one mango is placed let's say then the shape of the grape and the shape of the mango are totally different so that shape is one of the pattern based on which the input data can be classified so the ultimate aim of the supervised learning is to find out the hidden pattern and similarities within the input data and based on that it should classify the things okay for example the images are given you can see here that there is a dog there is a cat and different color different shapes and different things are there and labeling is not given you don't see any name here so what a machine unsupervised machine learning model should do it will check the pattern of a dog it will also check the pattern of other animals and based on their patterns color their orientation it will try to classify the images into who is dog and who is cat again in that different colors are there so dog can be classified into two three types so such type of outcome should be provided by the model only here is not the case that it should not identify this is the dog or this is the cat it should find out the pattern to make certain decisions again we will take one more example suppose there are different shapes of cracks are there size of crack and length the crack okay so model is trained again based on the images for example these are the different shapes and orientation of the cracks so it should classify whether the crack is of small size whether the crack is of medium size or the crack is very big. so that classification can be made based on the length of the crack again in case of unsupervised learning the problem could be related to clustering and for such type of problem these are the four methods can be used for example as we took the example of uh, the scores of student in numerical and statistical methods right so minimum marks would be 0 and maximum it would be 100 so all the marks should fall in this particular bracket right if somebody got 104 marks then it will not fall in this particular group and we call it as a outsider so this is one approach to identify the outliers 
then we may be interested to know or develop the relationship between various patterns or association. So either we can go for hierarchical clustering, K means clustering or some other methods such as principal compound analysis and so on. And in upcoming units, we will be discussing all these methods in detail so that you will come to know what is the scientific foundation behind using those methods which method is effective in which kind of applications okay so in brief what i wanted to tell you here is that in case of unsupervised data you will not have label data and the primary objective of this unsupervised learning is to find out the hidden pattern and based on that pattern the data needs to be classified into different different groups and these are the some of the methods either it may be related to clustering issue or association issue okay again one more example we will take suppose a bucket is there in that the different fruits are there right they are mixed with each other and this will be your input data then it should be given to your model and what is the primary function of the model it should find out its shape its color and other patterns and based on those patterns you should classify that and find out that there are two apples and other products right so this is the basic philosophy behind the unsupervised learning that a lot of input would be given to you and you need to train the algorithm and present the classified version of the input again in briefly when we compare supervised and unsupervised learning so in case of supervised machine learning the algorithms are trained using label data whereas in case of unsupervised machine learning the data is not labeled then each and every data is labeled in case of supervised machine learning so it is simple method because we know that this is a yellow color grape this is black color grape so input corresponding output input corresponding output is already known so it is simple however in case of unsupervised learning it has to find out the pattern because we don't know whether it's a pattern related to color or its shape or a size we don't know so first of all it has to identify the pattern and then it should classify so that's why the complexity is more in case of unsupervised machine learning in case of supervised machine learning the accuracy is very high because input output relation is very complex however in case of unsupervised learning we don't know pattern so if your model correctly identifies the pattern then it will provide you the good accuracy if it is not in a position to identify the pattern then there is a problem so accuracy wise also supervised learning is at a good end as compared to unsupervised machine learning so is there any question related to supervised versus unsupervised machine learning okay then we will go ahead and we will start with reinforcement learning so this is something different so when you look at the definition of reinforcement learning what you can see an agent will learn from its feedback and take appropriate action it also uses the past experience so when we talk about reinforcement learning then there is no need of special training because based on the situation the model will learn so just like us based on our past experience we make our future decision 
if i am very good in mathematics i will try to go to engineering if my biology is very good then i will go try to go for medical field so these kind of learnings are there and we are expecting from the reinforcement learning that based on past data feedbacks it should learn and develop itself so just like a training to a dog right so when you buy a new dog so initially that dog not in a position to understand what you are saying so if you say sit then he may or may not follow your orders because he don't know what is sitting and what is standing okay and slowly slowly you will train that dog when you say sit then it has to sit when you say stand then it should stand so likewise so if you and you can give some reward positive or negative reward for example if you say sit and he sits then you can give some food to him and the dog will also understand that yeah he is trying to train me and he will behave accordingly in order to get some food so similarly the reinforcement learning is there that that agent that machine learning algorithm or that agent would be a dog and it is learning based on your orders and over the period of time he will understand your orders and he will try to get positive reward out of it and initially during the training period he may get a negative reward okay so this is a continuous process so agent means dog and environment and would be you and your orders would be environment and his actions will decide whether he will get positive reward or negative reward so it is a continuous process and more and more experience will increase the accuracy of reinforcement learning again this is the just explanation of the example so that you can understand okay but when we talk about reinforcement learning then different terms comes into the picture for example environment then the state then what is positive reward negative reward what is the policy what is the value and its definition can be seen for example environment means physical world in which the agent operates state means current situation of the agent a reward means feedback from the environment and so on policy and value you can read it so these are the different parameters we need to consider while developing a reinforcement learning model or when we talk about reinforcement learning model we should know about these parameters and to understand in more detail we will take this example of pacman right so in this particular game what we can see the goal of the pacman or that agent here you can see yellow color pacman is there the goal is to eat food in the grid okay and at the same time it has to avoid the ghost when it moves it should avoid and accordingly he has to plan right in this case the grid world is the interactive environment so in this particular case your environment would be a grid and where it has to act the agent or that pacman receives a reward for eating food so when it will eat all the food then it will go to the next stage right and it will get punishment if it gets killed by the ghost so that is related to reward it may be positive or negative and the state of the agent would be the locations of the agent in the grid world so it will move all over the grid so each and every location would be the state of the agent so this is the simple example through which we will come to know what is environment in this case grid is the environment state means every position that the agent or that pacman makes that is state reward when it eats food that is positive reward 
when that ghost eats the pacman then it is a negative reward and so on and every time the pacman should learn from the behavior of the ghost and it should modify its path accordingly so that is a reinforcement learning now the last part is semi supervised learning so from the word itself we can say that it is a combination of supervised and unsupervised learning and why it is required to go for semi supervised learning because we know that in supervised learning we use labeled data and that is very expensive and why i am saying very expensive we will take the example of the amazon that we discussed in our initial classes that when you search some product on amazon website let's say laptop and after some time when you visit facebook page then what we say we see similar ads appearing on the facebook page so here you created the data that is laptop its company name configuration so data is received by that ai algorithm or ml algorithm and it will transfer that data to the system of facebook and that will show the similar kind of ad but this data transfer is not free of cost because one algorithm is developed by amazon second algorithm is developed by facebook and one is transferring data to other so it will earn some money and imagine millions and millions people are there in this world every day they are searching different kinds of product and this becomes a business strategy so labeled data is very expensive and hard to find and that's why every time you will not get a label data or if you if data is there it would be every expense so you cannot rely only every time on supervised learning again we can take the example of a solar panel right so the crack could be of very small size and it could be of any orientation any size and anything so n number of situations would be there so it is not possible for you to collect n number of panels that will talk about different shapes of cracks and different orientation of the cracks right so this also practical limitation with the supervised learning again in unsupervised or unsupervised learning it is very difficult to predict the pattern for example this is first pattern of the crack this is second this is third this is fourth so n number of patterns would be there and for unsupervised machine learning model it is very difficult to predict all these types of patterns so in order to overcome the limitations of both supervised and unsupervised machine learning it is better to use both labeled data as well as unlabeled data in order to increase the performance of the uh, model and that's why these models which uses both labeled as well as unlabeled data they are called as semi supervised learning so in labeled data we may have a different images of dog and we labeled it as a dog we have its pattern similarly we can have unlabeled data as well for dogs and when we combine both types of data and develop a third machine learning algorithm which uses both labeled as well as unlabeled data then definitely the accuracy of this machine learning algorithm would be better again there will be a there will be issue but least issue of the cost of the data and availability of availability of the data so this is how we can talk about the types of machine learning algorithms right so we in this particular session we discussed supervised learning unsupervised learning 
then reinforcement learning and semi supervised learning so briefly we will discuss again when we say supervised label data would be there when we say unsupervised unlabeled data would be there when we say reinforcement the algorithm will learn from past experience and develop itself and when we say semi supervised it is the combination of supervised and unsupervised so if you have any question related to this the session is open for discussion yes anybody anybody has any question yeah it seems that there is no question but i also wanted to make sure that you people are listening properly okay so i will start asking the question to you and accordingly i will mark your attendance okay so roll number 101 yes sir okay so tell me what is supervised learning as sir what is supervised learning ah <clears throat> uh, roll number 214 yes sir what is supervised learning in supervised learning there will be label data uh, and uh, there are three steps uh, training testing and validation in that okay good roll number 230 abhishek okay i guess he is sleeping roll number 114 shonak choudhary Okay. Yes. Tell me the example of supervised learning. Uh, sir, uh, regression problems. Hello. Yes, hello. Your exam yes, sir is correct. But why? That why is very important. Yes, please. Shona, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay, we will move ahead. One twenty-six, Mahesh. One twenty nine, one thirty seven. Yes, sir. Yes. Tell me the example of supervised learning. I guess he is also sleeping. Sir, decision methods. How? Uh, like uh, uh, we train the model using uh, using an algorithm. How? Tell me in a very simple word so that I will come to know. Uh, means we give data sets and then. Uh, it means in a simple simple example just i said that we will take some images of male and it is labeled as male and some images of female and we will label it as a female 
and we will train the model and next time we will give an unknown image yes, and sir. the model has to predict it is uh, whether it is a male or female or something else yes sir yeah similar example i am expecting yeah uh, so okay think or it i will move ahead 157 163 yes sir 157 yeah what is unsupervised learning Okay, we will go. And yeah, you can tell. So, sir, uh, in unsupervised learning, the model gets an unlabeled data set and is trained using the unlabeled data set. Okay, and what is the primary function of the unsupervised learning? One two fifty four, two sixty nine. Yes, sir. Yes, tell me. Tell me what was my question, sir. Two fifty four, sir. Yeah, tell me first of all what was my question. I asked one question. Yes, sir. Okay, you don't know. Sir, I cannot hear you, sir. Okay, great. Two fifty one. Sir, I don't remember, sir. Actually, my net. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to share and share the recording with you, so don't worry. Sir, what is unsupervised? Sir, what is unsupervised learning, sir? What you have said something like that. Yeah, tell me what is unsupervised learning. Sir, what is unsupervised learning? That is what most of the questions. Yeah, and what is the answer for that? Sir, the learning like as the unsupervised. So like uh, without any planning, it just uh, commands are executed. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go ahead. Okay. Ah, two seventy six. Sir, it's unlabeled data also. It's unlabeled data. Two fifty four. You can stop now. I understood your answer. Two seventy six. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Tell me the example of unsupervised learning. Sir, distribution of data. Yes, 